Hey, welcome to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we're reviewing an exercise bike I have been very excited to talk about. It is the Nordic Track S22i. So this is one of the coolest new designs from Nordic Track. It has some really innovative technology that I'm gonna show to you. We have rated this our number one exercise bike for 2019 because it has a lot of cool things. First of all, you'll notice at the front, it's got a 22 inch high definition touchscreen. So a lot of the interactivity of the programmings, iFit, all that is embedded in the console, the touchscreen console, which keeps the bevel and the overall look of the screen very clean. It also has automated incline and decline. So this is the only bike the studio bikes from Nordic Track are the only ones that feature this really innovative technology, which actually will lift and pivot the bike to match the grade you're riding. So back here, you'll notice there's a power incline motor and that will lift the bike up. You've got, also got an arm underneath that pivots the top up and down. And up here inside this shaft, you've got your incline and decline that will lift the front end of the bike and drop it back down. So this bike can reach a 20% incline and a 10% decline, which is really cool because I'm a spin instructor and in most spin classes, you simulate in incline just with resistance. So if you're going up a hill, you just increase your resistance. With the 22i, you can do both. You can increase your resistance to really maximize that hill work, but you also have actual incline and decline built in. It's a very cool feature. The other thing the S22i offers is magnetic resistance. So you'll notice in here, this SMR is silent magnetic resistance. So you've got opposing magnets on the flywheel that create resistance as that flywheel turns. So there's no actual friction or contact points, which means the resistance is quiet, doesn't wear out quickly, and it can be digitally calibrated so that you can hit a very specific level of resistance each time. There's 24 levels of digital resistance built into the S22i. Handlebar controls up here. You've got nice ergonomic handlebars with a nice shape. They kind of lay a little more horizontal for more of an aero uh, outdoor feel. And you've got incline buttons on the left and resistance buttons on the right. So you can just using your thumbs, incline and decline really easily right there on those extension grips. The other thing that I like about the S22i is you got a fan right here in the console. So right underneath this gorgeous 22 inch screen, nice fan right there, right about chest clavicle height, gives you a nice breeze when you need it. So this bike really is positioned for anyone who wants to simulate outside riding conditions. It can incline, decline, you've got lots of resistance options, as well as automated programming and iFit to keep you entertained and engaged. All right, today we're gonna to review the construction of the S22i and some of the different components, how they work together to make this a really impressive bike. So one thing I really like about the geometry and the design of the S22i is if you look closely, you can tell this bike has been built from the ground up to do very specific things, as opposed to some cycles that look like it's a really good spin cycle, but it's just got a screen mounted on the front. This one has a lot of integrated components that work together. So first of all, you'll notice that this screen right here comes down into this handlebar stem post. There's all internal wiring. So you don't have any wires externally out here clipped around the outside of this handlebar post. It's all internal, runs down through the bike and out down here and through the bottom. So you're not gonna trip on it. You don't have to worry about it being in your way and it doesn't protrude from the back of the screen. I love the internal wiring on it. The other thing that's really nice about this bike is you have three different adjustment points. So those mean how many places you can adjust the bike to make sure it's the right fit. The first one is right here. You have a front tension knob that manages the tension of this handlebar post. So it drops down into this stem and you can adjust the handlebars up and down. 
So if you are a tall rider and you have long knees, long legs, you wanna lift those handlebars up to avoid any knee encroachment in hitting those handlebars. You've also got two points of adjustment on the saddle. Right back here, you can adjust this to move your saddle forward and aft. Right here, you can adjust the stem post to lift your saddle up or down. So lots of different options as far as making this bike fit for most people. The maximum user weight on this is 350 pounds. So when you account for the fact that it'll lift and tilt, that's really impressive max weight capacity. However, the bike itself only weighs 210 pounds. So you can move it around. You'll notice up here, you've got very large pivoting wheels on this front stabilizer and down underneath, you've got leveling feet. So when it sits level, those feet hold it on the floor. In the back, you can adjust the leveling feet just a little bit to make sure that you don't have any rocking on your floor. And when you wanna move the bike, you pick it up from the back until it engages those wheels and you can move it forward and back on the wheels. My only recommendation would be watch out for the back of your screen when you're moving it. You don't wanna bump the screen into things. Let's talk a little bit about the pedals. So this is your pedal, your pedal arm and it attaches to the pedal crank in here which attaches to a belt drive that connects with your flywheel and moves the flywheel. On these pedals, the ones that come standard, you have a flat pedal base with a little bit of a gripper here and a cage. So you can stick your foot in using any athletic shoe, pull that cage tight to hold your foot in position. So the benefit of these pedals is you do not need special spin shoes. You don't need shoes with clips. You don't need anything other than a standard athletic shoe will fit in these pedals. They should fit securely and then you want to keep that cage nice and tight around your toe so that when you come to the top of that pedal stroke, you can pull up with those feet as much as push down at the bottom. So nice pedals on this. Uh, the other thing that's nice about these is you can swap them out. So if you want to use an S SPD pedal where you clip down in kind of like with a spin bike, spin shoe or a mountain bike shoe, you can do those or you can do like the Delta Look pedals like they do on the Peloton bike where it's more of a road bike pedal. You've got a nice ergonomic racing seat. So it's a little narrow. For beginning users, you might find it a little bit uncomfortable initially. That's normal. There's a reason why spin bikes have narrow seats. And it's because when you're riding high speeds for long distances, you want to be able to get a nice, easy pedal stroke on either side with as little friction in between the saddle and your lower body as possible. So you reduce the chance of getting saddle sore and it allows for free motion on either side with those legs without rubbing too much in the middle. It also has a nice soft surface that is coated so that you can easily wipe it off. It is germ resistant and it won't absorb moisture. So there's a reason you've kind of got a little bit of a simplified racing seat on there. For long-term riding, this is what you're gonna to wanna to use and get used to. A few other things, quiet magnetic re resistance. Let's talk about that. So like I said in the intro, your magnetic resistance uses magnets to oppose the motion of the flywheel. So as you ride, there is no friction. There's no brake pad that um, creates resistance on the flywheel to create that tension. It's all magnetic, which means there's no noise, there's no friction, and there's no um, Noise when, when you rotate the pedals, there's also no noise at braking. Magnetic resistance is kind of your high-end resistance. It's what you're gonna see on your high-end bikes. So this is an inertia-enhanced 32-pound flywheel. It's a really good flywheel on a spin bike like this. And I like how it is weighted, but the front is nice and light. So it's not like it's chunky up there, especially when you have to lift it and roll it. The flywheel doesn't get in your way. 
Let's talk about the footprint real quick. So the nice thing about spin bikes, and the reason they are my personal favorite, is spin bikes, you can get a really good high intensity, low impact workout on a relatively compact piece of equipment. They don't take up much room. This bike, you can roll in and out of a corner, you can roll into a closet, you can kind of tuck it out of the way when you're not using it because it's not very large. So overall, the, the bike itself is about 55 inches in length. If you come out here to this widest point, come back here to the rear stabilizer, it's about 55 inches in length. You've got 22 inches in, in width, so it's not very wide at all. And then at your highest point, you're about 57 inches high. If you take these handlebars all the way up, I think you can reach about 60 inches high, but that's as high as you're gonna get. So this is a really nice, compact piece of equipment with a lot of training options. All right, let's take a look at the console on the S22i. So as you can see, this is a 22 inch touchscreen, full color, and iFit has outdoor workouts. So you can follow along, as you can see, uh, an outdoor route. You've got your resistance over here on the side. You can adjust your resistance here on the handlebar control, or you can adjust it up here, right on the touch screen. On the left, you've got your incline and decline. You can adjust on the handlebar control. You can also adjust it here. I'll show you real quick. So the bike's gonna adjust just a little bit. So it will automatically just kind of match the grade of the trainer as we follow along on our bike. The screen is really crisp and clear. Um, you can just kind of see it's got really nice resolution. You've got your metric bar up here at the top. It'll tell you your incline, vertical gain, vertical loss, also wattage and average wattage uh, and your calories. You've got time elapsed and time remaining based on your program. It tells you your cadence and your resistance. Also here in the corner, it'll give you kind of an outline of what to expect through the class. So it's really nice to have this metric bar up here at the top. You can also control your volume on the touch screen right here. You've got three different levels of controls. You can either adjust for music if you want to turn the music up, or you can adjust for vol uh, trainer, take the trainer up and down, or you can do total volume. I've got it low right now, but let's turn it up for just a second. So we can kind of hear. So I've turned the music down, but the trainer kind of guides you as you go along on your, on your routes. And you also have volume controls over here on the side if you need to turn the total volume down and that'll always take your total volume down. The, the, the S22i has 35 onboard programs. So if you decide that you don't want to use iFit, you can just use the onboard programs and they typically have a workout of the day where they'll bring up one of their newer routes or classes that you can kind of test and that's really fun. So you can see you've got outdoor routes as you tag through, you've got class options. Down here at the bottom, you can go to browse and it will take you right to that workout library where the classes have been uh, kind of organized. So you've got power and performance, total body, Kyoto Crunch, so here they're in Kyoto, uh, Dream Chaser series, uh, next, so just different, some are in the studio, some are outside. The one thing that's really nice about a lot of these classes is they're hybrid classes. So let me show you, there's one right here. You can see the trainers off the bike, kind of doing some squats and stuff. So you've got lots of different options, both on and off the bike and um, different outdoor routes that you can load. You can also create a route. It's uh, synced with Google Maps. If you want to create a route, we go down here to the bottom and it'll bring up a Google map. It always just kind of starts you somewhere random. Right now we're in Cambodia, but you can write, you can type in uh, where you want your route to be and your screen will come up and then you can actually train on that route and just come back. So a few things on this, you do have handlebar controls right here. You've also got a fan at the bottom of the console. You can turn the fan up or down. You've got four different power settings, low, medium, high, and auto. And you can just kind of listen to that fan. It's not too loud, but it's so nice to have it right here directed right at you as you, as you exercise. You've got um, a jack, uh, jack on the side so that you can plug your headphones in if you want to. And you've also got an USB jack and an HDMI jack on this side. So you can cast uh, from the 
the S22i if you have a cable that will reach. So that's really nice option too. Really nice, comfortable layout here in the cockpit. This is a great place to set a phone um, and you've got an easy reach to water bottles down below. So one of the things that really makes uh, the S22i engaging and fun is the content. And the content is showcased by this amazing screen. All right, we're gonna review the functionality of the S22i. So functionality is performance. It's does this bike do what it's designed to do? It has a lot of cool features and components, but we wanna know why those matter. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the incline and decline. So you're gonna notice I've got an iFit program running behind me. This bike is going to automatically incline and decline depending on what that trainer is doing. So that makes the functionality of this bike tremendously more beneficial than just a standard bike that sits on the floor and doesn't incline or decline. So most bikes, you're on the floor and your only um, variable that you can really adjust is your resistance. You can increase resistance to simulate a hill or a stiff wind or something like that. You can decrease resistance if you wanna run sprints or pretend you're riding downhill, but resistance is your main variable that you use to work harder or less hard. And then you kind of adjust your speed accordingly. With this bike, you can get on this bike and I can drop it down to a 10% decline and still have 24 levels of resistance on there. So I'm still working hard at a decline. Let me show you how that works. So if I take my feet, put them securely in these pedals so that the toe's all the way at the top and ratchet up the strap, it should hold my foot securely. Then I'm gonna do the other one. You can, you can hear there's kind of teeth at the bottom of that pedal that grips your foot. So that's really nice. Now I'm gonna take this decline, I'm gonna take this down to a negative 10% decline. I want you to see how low it goes. Each time I hit the decline button, I drop by 0.5. So there I'm at my negative 10% decline. This is working downhill. So it changes my ergonomics on the bike. Now I have to brace my upper body just a little bit more to stay steady. But rather than just in a free spin downhill, I can increase my resistance. Each time you hit the resistance button, it jumps by one. So this is max resistance right here. 24 levels of resistance, which means even though I'm working downhill, I have some pretty stiff resistance I'm pedaling against. I want you to listen as I pedal. There's no noise. That silent magnetic resistance does not generate any friction or rubbing noise. So unless the bike is inclining or declining, it's extremely quiet. All right, I'm gonna take it back up. So here I am on a flat road and I'm gonna drop my resistance. Now one thing you'll notice is it doesn't matter where my resistance is. If I'm at 24 or 17 or I drop it down to one, there is no more or less noise output from the pedals. It's totally smooth and quiet regardless of your resistance. So you've got a lot of variables you can combine. You can do downhill, high resistance, flat road, high resistance, uphill, high resistance, working downhill, low resistance. It makes it so that you can do sprints, intervals, hill work, and even if you just wanna stay flat, but work into a headwind, you can pick that resistance up and just hold it at a 0% incline. So if I come down here and hit follow trainer, like we demonstrated in iFit, my bike is gonna automatically do whatever the trainer does. So if he heads up a hill, the bike is automatically gonna adjust, take me up the hill. If he heads downhill, it'll adjust again. And he's gonna moderate the, the resistance based on how it feels to ride outside on this terrain. Now, if at any time 
I want to override what the trainer is doing, make it harder or easier, you can just adjust and it'll drop it back down. So you can always override those automated settings in iFit. So there are so many training variables you can do. By combining incline, decline, and resistance, you've got significantly more training options. Even if you wanna drop it down low and still work heavy resistance, or you can climb up a hill but drop your resistance to one, you've got a lot of different combinations. The other thing I like about this is you've got digital resistance on here. So digital resistance means that every time I want to hit a level one, all I do is adjust it right here, find that level one, and it will stay there. It's the same every time. So as opposed to a tension knob, a friction tension knob where there's a pad that rubs against the flywheel to create tension, that's very, very hard to measure. So I don't know if you've ever been in a spin class and the spin instructor says, turn your knob up. And you're like, well, how much? What does that mean? And there's no actual readout of how much resistance you're generating at any given time. It's all just perceived exertion, which is fine. This is much more precise. So you've got 24 digital resistance levels on the S22i, which I think is right around perfect. I think 25 is right perfect. The Peloton bike has 100 resistance levels. That doesn't mean there's more resistance on it. It just means that the levels are much smaller. So you have to crank it up by five to 10 to fill a difference. Here you only have to add one to two levels of resistance to really fill that difference. So I think it's just more precise and you kind of know where you are because you're gonna max out at 24 no matter what you do. So there's lots of different training options when you combine all these different elements on the, the S22i. And that's what makes the functionality so impressive is that your noise level is low, your variables are high, you have built-in incline and decline, you have built-in speed, you have built-in automation. So you can kick that speed up as much speed as you can generate depending on how hard you're working and really get the most out of your ride. There's a lot of really specific things that you can adjust to get a lot of functionality out of the S22i. All right, there you have it. So what is our final verdict on the S22i? We have rated it our top spin bike for 2019. It has the best combination of features with some really innovative tech. I love the incline and decline feature on this bike. It's been streamlined and integrated so that the wiring is all internal. It's very quiet as you ride. We listened as I pedaled. There's no pedal noise, regardless of your resistance level. It automatically will increase and decrease if you are working a program or a class in iFit. You can also manually override those with uh, one touch buttons right there on your thumbs at your extension grips. So lots of functionality on the S22i. Make sure and check out current prices listed below and in the link below. And also check out our full review. We have a full extensive review on all the different components and features on treadmillreviewguru.com.